Hey friends, thank you for joining me for the first Mew Beauties video of the year. Since we are at the top of the year, I wanna pause to say Happy New Year. I hope that 2024 is off to a fantastic start for you and that this new year brings you all that your heart desires. So let's put that intention out there for you. I have six new fragrances and a discovery set to talk about today. These have been added probably since maybe mid to late November here. So over the past month and a half to two months. and I want I want to kick off with a fragrance that I had zero interest in when I saw it released. And I was in Sephora walking around, noticed it on the shelf and thought, you know, that actually looks pretty. The bottle looks nice. And let me just sniff and see what this one is all about. And I had no intentions of enjoying it at all. In fact, I thought that it would not be my style. We are talking about Lieb Absolu Platine from YSL. So the original Lieb you know, I need to retry that. I tried it a number of years ago and it just wasn't for me. I did fall in love with the intense version that is sitting on my shelf. And I thought the Le Parfum version was pretty too. I didn't get a full bottle of that, but it's a beautiful fragrance. So when I saw this flanker, I had that moment of like, oh my gosh, another flanker of YSL? <laughs> and, you know, just kind of didn't have any interest. The bottles online are not appealing looking. However, in store, when you see it in person, it's a whole nother deal. It has like this sort of reflective molten silver interior that I think is really pretty. I've always liked the original bottle design. It looks like a piece of jewelry. I love that this looks like the YSL logo that is on a lot of their handbags. It's a very, very pretty sophisticated bottle. I love this little cut out there. It's unique. And so that drew my attention. I did uh, look at a smaller bottle and picked up a smaller bottle. I want to share what this fragrance smells like. And for me, it is pretty different, a, a pretty big departure from the rest of the line. And so I wonder why this wasn't just its own independent, unique release with a different name apart from the flanker line. I don't always stand, understand all of those marketing decisions and that's okay. The fragrance for me smells a little bit, but not very much like it is described online. So Sephora talks about this being a warm floral. I 100% disagree with that. I, I would never, like in a blind sniff test, I would never call this a warm floral. Like if I didn't know what it was or what the description was, that would not be how I would describe it. And then the keynotes are a white lavender accord, orange blossom, and Diva Lavender, I don't know what the Diva part refers to. And if you know, please let us know in the comments. Listen, if you have tried Juliet Has a Gun Ode to Dullness, these could be cousins. That's a, a newer release from, I think, last fall. I have that one too, and it's really nice. They're not identical, but there's a lot of similarity in the fragrances. For me, this smells like a very elegant, elevated laundry detergent. And I mean that in a really good way. Some of you are not into those clean laundry detergent smells. For me, it has to be accompanied by other notes that take it away from being a laundry detergent smell. Like it has to be part of a more fuller, richer composition. And I feel like this is. I would describe this as an icy, cool fragrance that comes across really clean, like a clean girl kind of scent. This will go for me, very well with the clean aesthetic vibe that kind of made its way around the internet last year. For me, this is more like an aldehydic fragrance. So it has a lot of those clean soapy notes. I do pick up a little bit of lavender or something aromatic in it. Does it have any warmth? I would say in the background. So it's not a completely cold fragrance like some purple florals can be and some aromatic fragrances can be. It does have a little bit of warmth far in the background. And the warmth for me comes across like this sort of fluffy texture almost in the cotton direction, like cotton balls. I imagine cotton balls soaked in a really nice laundry detergent. And so you got your gain, you got your Tide detergent, you know, you got your snuggle, <laughs> all of those store-bought detergents. And then you have sometimes detergents that are pretty fancy that you have to purchase from independent places that have a little bit of perfumey smell into the detergent, but it also still smells clean and fresh. That's what I would put this in the direction of. I feel like this is a very ladylike clean smell, something that I would not hesitate to wear to the office or to special occasion events. It's not a date night fragrance in the sense that I don't think that this is a sexy or alluring or sensual fragrance. I feel like this is commanding cleanliness. I love this. I think this is really good. Well, maybe love is a strong word. I really, really, really like it. Maybe bordering on love. I'll have to wear it some more. 
I've worn it twice now and I think it's really nice. It's different from Ode to Dullness in that there is a sandalwood creaminess to that fragrance that maybe is missing from this. I would say this is a little bit more fluffy in the cotton ball direction like I mentioned, whereas that other fragrance has some creaminess to it. Otherwise, they could be really good friends. Like these are best friends in a clique of fragrances <laughs> in my mind. And this bottle is super pretty. So this gets a big thumbs up from me despite the poor reviews on Fragrantica. And by the way, this lasted a long time on me. And for me, a long time has passed six hours. So this was a good work days length of fragrance for me and nice projection. Not way across the room, but a really nice scent bubble. Very pleasant. Next is another winner. I was really surprised that I liked this fragrance as much as I ended up liking it. So I purchased it for the bottle. And yes, I am shallow like that. If a bottle is pretty enough, I will venture out and grab it and see what I think. But this is Lychee Rose from Nest, which I talked about in my December Fragrance Awards that posted this past weekend. I am a huge fan of these nest bottles. I think they are simply the cutest, flirtiest little designs. So take a look at that with the rose. And I suppose it's lychee. I mean, I haven't looked at a piece of lychee, you know, fruit in a long time, but my recollection is that it smells similar to that. And now I have to go check online. Hang on, let me Google this. Why, yes, my recollection is correct. And that is what lychee looks like. So, and it has this cute little extra design on the back like that you know, additional little zhuzh back there. So the fragrance itself is fun and young and flirty and bright. However, not so in the youthful direction that us more mature ladies in our middle age times can't enjoy this or beyond all the way up through the later years of your life. It is a rose and lychee and champagne fragrance. Those are the three key notes listed on Fragrantica. And I can confidently let you know that all three of those notes come out in this fragrance. This does feel sparkling, effervescent, bright, and fun. If you have smelled Net Rose Parade, which you can also find on Sephora, that's a really neat fragrance as well. It's kind of like that. If you have smelled the pink uh, Nina Rishi Rose, is it called Rose Absolute? I forget the name of it. That one uh, with some effervescence to it is kind of what this is like. It has a little bit of Delina vibes, but it doesn't have the sharpness that the lychee in or lychee, however you want to say that, is in Delina. I enjoy this. As with all Nest fragrances, you're going to get moderate longevity out of this. And by that, somewhere in the four to six-ish hour range, maybe a little less for some people, maybe a little more for others. And this is a nice scent bubble very pleasant. I think this is a crowd pleaser. I can't imagine anyone in your scent space not enjoying the way that this smells on you. The other fragrance that it reminds me of is Gold Coast by Bond Number no. 9. It's aspects of all of those sort of rosy, fruity, fun, flirty, summery types of fragrances uh, that are, are in here. Really, really a neat fragrance and the bottle is just stinking cute. So this gets a big thumbs up also. Look here, come close. One of the classiest, classiest releases of the year. And I wish I would have gotten on this sooner. But like I always say, a good sale will have me filling up my cart. <laughs> so I did get this one 20% off. And let me tell you, by the way, let me pause, 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 pause. You know, prices on fragrances are going up, including designer releases. So a lot of the ones that I've mentioned today are probably more than what you remember if you haven't been fragrance shopping in a while. The one I'm going to share with you at 1.7 ounces, and it's a designer fragrance, is $170. Ay, Dios mío. But this is worth every penny and more. Dior knocked it out of the park. Francis Kirkjean knocked it out of the park. We're talking about J'adore Lore. J'adore Lore. I am not the biggest fan of these bottles. Look at my head upside down in the crystal ball. That's okay. Oh, all right. Anyway, <laughs> I think I like the original bottle with the coils more than this gold. That is okay. This fragrance is so elegant and classy. This is the refined lady with her pressed suit on. She is crisp and fresh. She's so fresh and so clean, friends, in her long cashmere coat. It's cream colored. <laughs> her suit underneath is also cream colored, pressed and beautiful. She's got the perfect kitten heel on and she's got a lovely shoulder bag and her hair back in a bun. This is this is like office glamour, if you ask me. Now, again, thinking about the description, Sephora describes this as a warm floral 
and the key notes is orange blossom, rose, and jasmine. It's really interesting that some people have compared this to Alien, and I don't, I mean, look, you know, Alien is one of my top 10 fragrances for life, and I adore it, and maybe the jasmine here comes across a little bit like that, but friends, they are nothing alike. And I know my Alien. I know my Alien well. <laughs> this is, for me, another clean floral fragrance, whereas this one is very cool and soapy. This does have some warmth to it, although I will say the edges of this fragrance stay cool, calm, and collected. Like, you're never going to see this fragrance sweat. It's that kind of swagger that this fragrance has. This is for a mature person or someone who enjoys mature scents. I find this to be a mature floral in the old school sense. Okay, like when you had your late 80s, early 90s, ladies walking into the room, their hair was perfectly coiffed, and they had that glorious floral fragrance on. It is like that without the heaviness of the fragrances of those days. It's almost like you skim off the floral aspect of those beautiful fragrances and plop it down into this beautiful modern version. Do I get a lot of warmth from this? I would say there are warm aspects of it. I wouldn't call it a cold fragrance, but like I said, it's almost like the edges of the fragrance stay calm and cool and unbothered. This is the unbothered, elegant person that has their life together kind of a fragrance. I am pleasantly surprised. I ordered this on a whim. I wasn't sure if I would like it, but you know, when Sephora has those 20% off coupons and sales, I'm shopping the sales <laughs> guaranteed and I decided to pick this up and have zero regrets. This is gorgeous. It projects really nicely off of the skin. This is a room filler when you first put it on and you're going to have moderate to long longevity from this. So it'll take you through a good work day and probably into the early evening as well. Highly recommend this one. This one I would say try first because of the cold, icy, soapy nature of it. This one, I think if you're into florals, you'll probably enjoy this, okay? So others of you that are maybe not fans of mature scents, you want to try this one out first. But like I said, it's a, a vintage floral brought into modern times and uplifted in a bright, beautiful, elegant fragrance. Thumbs up. Chef's kiss. Then the other thing that will get me to try something new if it's not a sale is a gift card. So I did get Sephora gift cards for Christmas from my family. They're so good to me. And I took a chance and ordered the new Black Opium Over Red. Over Red. So the bottle is a very pretty red color. It's still the same Black Opium design. How do we feel about these bottles? Are we still okay with them? Are we sick of them? I think the top part of it, this piece is a little bit goofy. There's something that's like disproportional or proportionate, proportional about this top piece compared to the rest that just kind of bugs me. Nonetheless, the fragrance is friends, your original black opium with the coffee amped up and with this very sweet cherry accord. So now cherry comes in different scent flavors, if you will, in different perfumes. Sometimes it can be a little tart. Other times it can feel like a boozy cherry. Other times it can feel airy, you know, like more in the cherry blossom, like the floral direction than anything else. Here, the cherry comes across very warm and round and rich but subtle at the same time, like a rich, subtle cherry. If you can imagine the combination of those two things in one accord here. I would say this is still very heavy on the vanilla as a fragrance. One of the ways I can describe this best is if you're familiar with La Nuit Trésor from Lancome, and then the flanker came out called A La Folie. It was like a sweeter, more sensual, almost skin scent version, but you know, for intimate occasions, if you will, date night, if you want to, you know, be the, the sweet come hither type of uh, person. The way that that a la folie flanker behaved in comparison to the original, for me, is a lot like this over red compares to the original black opium. It is like the Le Parfum version, which has the heavy vanilla in it, except instead of additional vanilla, you have an amped up, very sweet coffee accord and a sweet cherry, a sweet, rich cherry, but the cherry is toned down. This is not something, I, I would not call this a cherry fragrance. I would call this a vanilla fragrance with some nice cherry and coffee hints. That is the description. It's a vanilla fragrance and it's nice. It is not the longest lasting like the original Black Opium. I have tried this. It does give you a number of hours and it is a very intimate, sensual scent. And for that reason, I give it a thumbs up, but you need to know what you're getting with this fragrance. It's not going to be one that's going to take you through the entire night. It will, however, take you through a nice dinner with your significant other if you want to cuddle up and be close to each other while you enjoy your dinner.
or have a movie together or whatever. One of those kinds of things where it's a number of hours that the person is going to be smelling the fragrance on you. So this gets a thumbs up from me too. Maybe not quite as enthusiastically as the first three, but it's still a thumbs up. It's a nice smell. It's a very nice smell. Then after years of waffling on whether I wanted this next fragrance or not, I saw it on a killer deal on Joma Shop. You know, I'm an affiliate with Joma Shop and I'm constantly shopping on there as well as some other sites that are linked in the description box if you're interested in checking these out. And I just could not resist this deal. This is from Atelier de Zor and this is Rouge Sarai. And I purposefully shook it up before I brought it up to the camera here so that you can see the gold flecks that are in it. Let me be really clear, I don't care for the gold flecks. When I first got my first bottle from this line, I thought it was fascinating. I was like, isn't that wonderful? There's gold flecks. But friends, when you spray it out onto your skin, it actually leaves gold flecks on you. I have rubbed off all the ones, this is my scent of the day, by the way. I have rubbed off all the ones on my own personal skin, but I like to spray my clothing as well and don't like that these gold flecks come out onto on your skin. I don't care for that and I don't like it in some other fragrance like oils and so forth from other lines that have the gold shimmer. That's not for me. <laughs> Just give me the fragrance. I want to spray my body and my clothing with it. That said, this is a lovely fragrance for the deep fall into the winter here and maybe even into the early spring. One of the keynotes in this fragrance is dates. And if you're familiar with dates, they have like this syrupy sweetness. Like think of syrup but with a fruity nuance. And by fruity, I'm not talking about bright fruits like strawberry. I'm talking about like a deep, almost currant smell, black currant uh, mixed with a sticky sweetness. So think about like those dark over ripened fruits if you're not familiar with the smell of dates or if you've smelled prunes, it's a you know different thing, but that same type of like sticky sweetness that you get from dried prunes if you're not familiar with what dates smell like, same kind of idea. So that is here prominent in the fragrance along with the soft cinnamon. I don't find the cinnamon as pronounced in here as perhaps some others do, but you definitely get it. Together, it's almost like the fragrance has a boozy accord. I don't see any boozy notes listed in the note structure for this. All of that is sitting on vanilla and something that is coming across balsamic, resinous, sticky, another sandalwood in the fragrance as well. This is not a super projector. I was hoping it would be a little bit stronger than it is. It's a little more soft and intimate, not quite as soft and intimate as this over red is. It does have a little bit more presence to it. And I would say it's moderately lasting. Okay. I'm probably on hour four or five of this fragrance. And I do still have like hints of it on me. You know, you can still smell it. So this is nice. I definitely give it a thumbs up. Just know what you're getting if this is a fragrance that you're interested in. Great like date night, you know, sweater weather type of thing. Next, the wonderful folks over at M. Mikolev sent me this fragrance to try out in addition to a couple of other fragrances that are back here in my giveaway. Today is the last day to enter the giveaway. And so I will put the link to that in the description box. Please go fill out the giveaway form if you're interested in being considered. One of the fragrances I really wanted to try that they sent over is a hard to find one. This is called Mon Perfume from uh, from M. Mikolev. Okay, this is old Hollywood glamour for me. It's a patchouli floral fragrance with a lot of sweetness to it. This is one of those special occasions, super glamorous types of fragrances where you feel super grown up and put together. It's compared most to Angel from Mugler, which I find interesting. I don't know that I remember Angel smelling quite like this. I could see some aspects of that, you know, being together in that it's almost like a, a gourmand patchouli fragrance but this really does stand on its own. According to Fragrantica, it's patchouli and caramel, passion fruit, musk, orange, flower. If I didn't know any of that, I would say that it is patchouli with sweet florals. Very nice, and maybe even an amber accord. This is glamorous. Again, thinking back to the 80s and 90s and those big bombastic florals that people wore that had some patchouli for some longevity and base. It reminds me a lot of that and one that I would push out, pull out rather, <laughs> excuse me, for something like an evening wedding, an evening affair, or some other family occasion when I knew my matriarchs were going to be in the room and they were going to be wearing really strong, beautiful perfumes and I wanted mine to compete with theirs. This might be one that I pull out. Really lovely fragrance. Next, I want to talk about House of Sillage. I am now an affiliate with House of Sillage. Thank you to the folks over there. And there's a link below if you're interested in shopping. I have Mickey and I have Minnie. Those are my favorite from the house. I also have Hufflepuff, which is an addition from this past year. 
awesome fragrance and I may pick up Wonder Woman. I'm interested in Wednesday with a little hand on it. I'm waiting to see some more reviews on that one and a few others from the house. This is a house that I hesitated to shop from, from a long, for a long time because of the prices. But if you know House of Sillage, there are frequent sales that bring the prices to a more reasonable amount. So they sent over a their signature collection discovery set, which is also part of the giveaway. So this exact set will go to someone. I have sprayed some of these and want to share with you some of my favorites. If you're not in the giveaway and you're interested in this discovery set because you want to try these fragrances, friends, before you buy, because they are pricey. This is available on House of Sillage and it is a pretty pricey discovery set, but you do get a lot in there. You get some pr pretty generous decants of 10 of their signature fragrances and you can use my code here for a percentage off that is down in the description box as well. I think it's 25% off of the total, which makes it a really nice discovery set. So let's talk about some of the favorites. I'm going to say my top pick of the 10 and the one that I would consider purchasing first, especially as we leave winter and go into the spring and summertime is Haute Bijou. I can see why the ladies go crazy over this one. This is a tropical dream of a fragrance and in a perfumey way, not suntan, not super sickly summer tropical fruity drink. It's like an elevated perfumey tropical dream. The keynotes are mango and black currant and grapefruit. There are some florals and a little bit of woodiness and sweetness from amber and vanilla. But so it's 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 soft and it's sweet, but I would say the main thing that stands out to me is that beautiful tropical accord, particularly in the opening in the mid of the fragrance. It will be quite a luxurious summer tropical fragrance that's different than anything else I have in my collection. It would be a great accompaniment to like, I love Soleil Blanc, not Eau de Soleil Blanc, but Soleil Blanc from Tom Ford. That is a floral coconut fragrance that's beautiful in the not quite suntanny, but like a step beyond that, a step above that type of fragrance. This one would be the elevated cousin of Soleil Blanc, but representing the tropical fruit notes. So I love that it has that brightness from the grapefruit in it alongside the sweetness, very, very deep sweetness from mango. Mango has its own kind of sweetness. If you've had a ripened mango, you know what I'm talking about. And that's a difficult note I find to get right in fragrances. I sometimes feel like mango in fragrances comes across a little artificial or forced and sometimes it's a little too green like an unripened mango but a ripe mango note is really difficult to get realistic and I think that Haute Bijou really nails it. Another one that caught my attention from this discovery set is Chaveau d'Or which is this very feminine very pretty like pink ballerina pretty rose strawberry raspberry combination with vanilla again that sweet softness from vanilla in the background with the floral fruitiness on top and it's just delightful it's hard not to like this fragrance i can see why this is another one that the ladies go crazy over i totally get that this one was a little bit softer for me than haute bijou which had a little bit more presence chevaux d'or was softer to the skin and maybe not quite as projecting as Haute Bijou, but still pretty, especially if you want a dainty, delicate female fragrance or female leaning, feminine leaning fragrance to be and feel pretty. Then we go to Holiday, which is this bright, beautiful citrus, woody fragrance. The citrus is blood orange, and I think some of the other traditional citruses, like maybe lemon with a woody base. And I love that the citrus is tart and bright and almost like tangy, zesty to, I say like this, like I tasted it. No, I didn't taste it, but you know, smells give you a sense of taste, at least in your memory, if that makes sense. So I get this beautiful, sweet, yet tart, and tangy and zingy, <laughs> zingy citrus at the top of this fragrance. And I think that the woody base on this is just perfect for those of you that like a fresher, less assuming fragrance that isn't imposing and easy to wear to work every day, run errands, you know, your sort of signature go to out of the shower everyday fragrance. This would be a great one holiday. And then finally, I won't embarrass myself trying to pronounce this name. So it's going to be on screen. And this fragrance is a rose patchouli fragrance with some spiciness, a little bit of kick to it. And this also gives me a little bit of old school Hollywood glamour like the Mon Parfum, Parfum, Mon Parfum from M. Michelif does. That same kind of vibe where you feel glamorous, put together, imagine your really best evening dress on going out to a glamorous affair. 
really lovely fragrance. Overall, I really enjoyed sampling all of them, was pleasantly surprised by, by them. And again, I'd go to that Haute Bijou first. That would be my top choice out of the group. Although if any of these were in my collection, I would certainly enjoy them all. So again, this particular set is in the giveaway. Be sure to check out that video after this one and enter, okay? if you're interested, or if you'd like a fresh set that is wrapped in cellophane and ready for only your use, you can use my code in the description box and shop through that link for this discovery set or any House of Sillage fragrance. The discount code only applies to this set though, just to be clear. So friends, those are the new beauties that I have added to my collection. I think of all of them, I am most surprised by this one in terms of me actually really liking it when I didn't anticipate it. And I'm most excited to wear probably this one because it is so elegant and classy and just fun to wear, really fantastic fragrance. All of these are good. What's new in your collection? Let us know below and let us know if you've tried any of these or the House of Sillage signature line. We'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you in the next video. Take care.